How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to week number five of the Lowdown Show on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. We're your Canadian-based WWE podcast that reviews and discusses Monday Night Raw and Tuesday Night Smackdown from the past week. Also during the show, we have our segment called The List of Ten and WWE Headlines, where we talk about any important news related to the WWE. Every week, the Lowdown Show is broadcasted live right here on Spreaker, available at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP or on the Spreaker app available for all Android and Apple devices after we are done recording this podcast it will be posted in full on Spreaker itself on our YouTube channel YouTube.com slash NHBWP and on iTunes and Stitcher Radio by searching The Lowdown Show so go check us out wherever it's easier and convenient for you to listen to us and give us a follow and subscribe and give us a 5 star rating everything helps ladies and gentlemen you can follow the podcast on Twitter, No Holds Bar WP. Enjoy in the conversation. Have your thoughts and questions read right here on the show. We are also available on Facebook and Instagram now by searching the No Holds Bar WP. All links will be in the description below on YouTube. I am your host, the self proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. Every week I'm continuing to be joined by my corporate co host. He is the blissful boss. Mr. Corporate himself, Corporate Cappy. I'm the best say what? 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 Exactly. <laughs> Juggy Brown, about time, sub brothers. What's up, Juggy Brown oh, in the Juggy chat? Juggy Brown, always getting in those late tweets. And Glorious Greg. What's up, Glorious Greg? <laughs> Hashtag Glorious Bitch, Juggy Brown says. <laughs> you guys need to settle it in a House of Horrors match. Yeah, you guys need a House of Horrors match for yourselves. Well, that'd be terrible. Anyways, um... What's going on, guys? Uh, couldn't get the show done yesterday. Had some random some problems. Uh, not technically, but just life-wise, <laughs> shit went down and couldn't do a little on yesterday. So we did this morning, really early morning this morning for us. Um, Greg says Cappy loved your new show. He loved it. Oh, it's not yeah. Cappy's show, Greg. This is our show. Don't single anyone out here. But yes, it was a great first episode by our corporate co-host here. Um, it will be done by both of us, guys. It's okay. Or maybe corporate Cappy just who knows? Who knows what will happen? We got new shit on the way in the, on this uh, this channel, guys, so stay tuned. A lot of new shit. Um, we're actually working on something, a little uh, vlog, I guess you should say, of uh, our hunt for WWE action figures and trading cards. Yeah. So we'll be posting that on our YouTube channel. So uh, Definitely is a hunt around yeah, here. <laughs> especially around here, and we'll tell you why in our vlogs. But uh, I got an unboxing of two blaster boxes coming up. So yep, we got another there. unboxing video of WWE cards by Cobra Cavi. Made a trip over to US of A. And, uh, brand, new, brand new set. Brand new set. So stay tuned for that, ladies and gentlemen. Other than that, not really much to talk about in the week of WWE this week. It was, uh, it was boring. It's like it's almost like they knew they were going on their trip overseas and just wanted to get everything out of the way. It's just now they don't have to worry about anything because everything's taped. I just want to point out now that we should do our show taped next week since they taped. Yeah, since WWE show. is taped next week, we should do ours taped. We shouldn't even do ours live. <laughs> uh, we'll see. Um,. But yeah, I have nothing to say really before the show, before we get into the review. Nothing stood out to me. Um, I mean, we had the obvious Charlotte nudes this week. It's a topic we can talk about, I guess, off the show. No, only uh, Becky is the only one that needs to release nudes. Out of PCB, PCB, it's only been Charlotte and Paige and nudes. Oh man, I've already seen the memes. Um, <laughs> Jay Brown, you tape your show and I'll kill you. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not scared of the big dog anymore. Yeah. He's, uh... Yeah, he's he was MIA general. this week. But yeah, Charlotte, the nudes, yes, we've seen them. A lot of people have compared it to Mr. Garrison. Or Mrs. Garrison. <laughs> um, I see we're, the resemblance. I know what they're talking about. We're going to leave it at that. Yeah, we're just going to leave it at that. You know, poor... Man, it's... I can't really make fun of these people because it's not really their fault. They're getting hacked. Yeah. And apparently, former uh, women's champion Victoria was also... Mm. I don't know if I want to see those. She's a little old. Um, but yeah, so, that's it. Nothing really else to talk get about. Get into the tweets. Get into the tweets out there. Just start off the show with the tweets. Might as well. And we'll start off with our Twitter fan of the month for April or May. April. April. And that's uh, Juggy Brown. No, Casey Salvis. Casey Salvis. Oh, yeah, he won. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, Casey. Now. Yeah, yeah. We're on uh, a new month. My bad, ladies and gentlemen. My bad. Um, Keith Salas, we'll start off with your tweets once I pull them up here. I'm not sure why I, they weren't pulled up, because I actually had them pulled up, but now they won't pull up. There you go. 
All right, we'll start off with Casey Salvas. Oh, my God, he's got some great tweets this week. So, uh, Corporate Cappy, praise yourself here. Raw was garbage. <laughs> Nothing else to say. Garbage at least reigns. At least Roman garbage reigns was not on the show. <laughs> Two out of ten. Juggy, I don't know why you're hating on Greg, man. You should be hating on Casey Salvas. He's the one that's ripping your boy apart every week. <laughs> Kyle Botch strikes again. Yeah, yeah. It's not my fault, man. I had to open on Twitter, Juggy Brown. And then when I op- reopened the browser up, like I had it minimized, it was gone. It's not my fault. Twitter's, is, you know, Twitter's botching. I ain't botching. It's okay, Dana. Whatever. Uh, Casey also put SmackDown was not any better besides Jericho versus Owens. Don't understand why Nakamura was not on TV. Garbage episode, 3 out of 10. There's reasons why Nakamura is not on TV, Casey he's Salvas. Not, he's not going to be there every week because yeah. his, his nostalgia is going to go away right yeah. away. It, it, there's a reason, Casey. So, you know, hang tight, Casey. You know, relax. Take a chill pill. We'll see Nakamura at Backlash, and it's going to be worry. awesome. We'll see your boy Reigns back on TV next week. Yeah. Uh, Michael Chow put, uh, sorry boys, missed the tweets because it was a very busy week, but simply, I think he's typing something else, but I can't read it yet. Uh, Casey Salvas also put, still can't believe Gender Steroid Mahal is on the main event, is in the main event. Well, we don't know if that's the main event yet of Backlash. I'm actually hearing word that Styles and Owens might actually be in the main event. Please. That'd be sick. Uh, no wonder the viewership is down lately. Maybe WWE will finally realize it. <laughs> they won't because they want to push everything in India for some reason. Not sure why. Sink it in, man. <laughs> what? Uh, and he put up. He sent out a tweet. Um, this is WWE, and it's a GIF of a garbage can and some little creature coming out going, "I'm garbage." <laughs> <laughs> wow, Casey. Oh, uh, those are great. Um, we got a uh, Juggy Badass next week. A former. Former. Uh, Twitter fan of the month. Former Twitter fan. At Zazel YT on uh, Twitter. He also has his own YouTube channel, guys. Go check out uh, Juggy Bass. I'm pretty sure it's YouTube.com slash Azazel something. And he'll post it in the chat. And he'll post it in the chat. Um, but go follow him on Twitter, Juggy Badass. Uh, the big dog's heart is officially broken. Y2J <laughs> has left us. What are we going to do without the list of Jericho? Cry it up, man. <laughs> I don't know what we're going to do. <laughs> Also, how is the Intercontinental title the top title on Raw? Both can, minor titles are the yeah, top titles. Literally, on both shows. Can someone explain what the fuck WWE is thinking? Has oh. there been a Lesnar sighting? Do the Universal Championships not exist anymore? Nope. I'm not. so confused. Another thing, don't you guys feel like the U.S. title is the main event and the WWE title is a mid-card? Mm-hmm. 100%. <laughs> not sure why they're doing this, but hey, we just got to roll with it. If, they wanna, if this is a way to make the mid-card titles mean something again, and that's... The two main titles taking a back seat for one pay per view, then why not? Um, it's hard to be a WWE fan at the moment. It's the only time I get excited. The only time I get excited now is when I see Alexa Bliss and Sasha Banks. Oh, and of course, hashtag Raw is Reigns. <laughs> Don't worry, guys. Stay tuned for the Braun burial. Hashtag Reigns always wins. <laughs> yeah, wait, wait till Roman comes back for his hero's Superman return. Yeah, he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna shoot balls of fire. At, at Braun Strowman in a Great Balls of Fire match at Great Balls of Fire. Yeah, speaking of Great Balls of Fire, we won't see Lesnar till then, probably. <sighs> Stress. It's in my uh, list of ten. We'll get into that later. Um, Juggy Brown puts YouTube.com slash Azazel, right? I don't know if I'm saying this right, Juggy Brown. You got to – it's R-A-I-D-O-R-I for you guys listening. That is his YouTube channel. Go check him out and subscribe to him. Simply put, Michael Chow, though, he puts in the chat, Ross sucked, SmackDown sucked, Superstar Shake-Up destroyed the Darter B. Those are my tweets. <laughs> Thank you, Michael Chow. And speaking of Michael Chow, Michael Chow TV also has his own wrestling podcast on Spreaker, the same app we use. So go check him out. You can go through our followers and go click on him and subscribe to him. He'll be having a YouTube channel sometime this year as well. He does some great work. He's got some awesome weekly prizes, guys, and pay-per-view prizes. Go check him out. Me and Cobra Cappy have been the recipients of a few prizes. So go. It's, all you have to do is interact. Tweet at him, and you are eligible to win a prize. So go check him out. Michael Chow TV or hashtag WBMC TV, the after show. I like that. Yeah, Go check that out, ladies and gentlemen. All right, let's move on with the tweets. Getting a little off topic here. And we'll start off with the next one. Trey Patterson. We had uh, him call in on the show on our payback review. Spoke to Trey. He's a buddy of our buddy, friend of a friend. Um, so Trey Patterson puts, Raw was okay this week. Nothing special. Aries and Perkins put on a good match. The rivalry between the, the Hardys and Sheamus and Cesaro looks like it will be pretty good. 
The main event was solid, was a solid match, but why did Dean and Miz why they bring Dean and Miz over from SmackDown just to have a feud again? See, I was thinking that too. I'm going, what the fuck? Didn't you guys? Why wouldn't they just have Balor of Rollins face Ambrose? What's something the point different. Of Superstar shakeup. You're gonna have the same feud, right? Lastly, Raw gets a bonus points for no reigns. Five out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag Roman is shit. <laughs> oh boy, Juggy. A lot of people hate. We added your another boy. Roman hater to yeah. the list. Yeah, for SmackDown, he puts was better than expected, but still pretty bad. I don't know what's worse: steroid Mahal is the number one contender. Or the welcoming committee and Charlotte as a face. The Fashion Files was one of the few bright spots and KO and Y2J was a good match. The Fashion Files. Yeah, the Fashion Files was great. But had, a, but had a shitty predictable result. Four out of ten. Hashtag cry it out, man. You got a gif of out. Jericho crying. <laughs> we'll go to Trace Friend, Tyler Jones at TylerJones22 on Twitter. Raw was alright this week, even without my boy Braun. SmackDown was better than I thought it would be. Raw gets a 6, and SmackDown gets a 3.5, 3, or 4, like a between rating. <laughs> At Cooper Cappy, don't forget to talk about the plan I had when we talked about it. Hashtag make white great again. Oh, we were, ta- we were discussing that maybe Bo Dallas should become part of the Wyatt family, and him and Bray can team up and become in the tag team division as, hmm. bro- as the Wyatt brothers. Hmm. Make Bo Dallas, you know, relevant. Wow. Michael Chow just put, by the way, one more thing. Just tweeted both of you. Road Dog replied to a tweet of mine saying Vince knew more than me. The kiss ass of Vince. Check out the tweet, man. <laughs> what? Hmm. Okay, I got I to gotta see this. Live on the air. Live on the air, I got to see this. Um, yes, yeah, so what do you guys think of uh, Bray Wyatt teaming up with Bo Dallas and becoming the Wyatt Brothers? As a tag team. Because it's not like they're going to push Bray in a singles capacity anytime soon, it doesn't look like. Let me know what you guys think of that prediction. So, I don't know what Michael Chow said, but he re- he replied to Michael Chow. He says, replying to Michael Chow. So, VKM doesn't know what he's doing, but you do. Come on, man. He's got a pretty good track record. Business is good, and it's a business. Ooh. Michael Chow, that's not you got put in your place by, <laughs> by Road Dog. Michael Chow, you, uh, you should ask him for a creative job. Right? Yeah, can you let him know that we have know. a podcast? And you should check it out because it's pretty good. <laughs> oh, obviously check out yours too. <laughs> yeah, you should you should just reply in it with your your link to your yeah a link to your podcast. <laughs> like check out if you want to know more of my opinions, check out Michael Chow TV. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just do a plug. <laughs> Corporate plug, I like it. Uh, next set of tweets go to Glorious Greg. He changed it back to Glorious Greg. I remember when it was Glorious Enigma. Greg, I don't know what you're doing there. Yeah, I uh, put honestly both shows. Were horrible in my opinion. This shakeup fucked everything up, and it feels like WWE is in Bizarro World. <laughs> They're in a house of horrors. Yeah, the only the only good thing about Raw was the main event match, and for me personally, seeing the Hardys, which is why I gave it a two, and as for SmackDown, I gave it a three because the main event match, Ty Dillinger, and the segment with Brazongo seeing Styles in the opening of the show. So those are his uh, reasons why SmackDown went three out of ten. And he put Vince messed things up by rushing to shake up. Hashtag shake my head. Hashtag out of touch. Hashtag disappointed. Hashtag worst for business. Absolutely. You yeah. say that every week on this podcast. Yeah. He's, he's out of touch. It's crazy. And, uh, oh, and lastly, there was one superstar I missed seeing on Monday. And that man is Braun Strowman. So this is for him. Hashtag. <laughs> Wow, I didn't think we were going to get at least one of those this week. Yeah. We got a roar. Thank you, Glorious Greg, for continuing with the roar streak. It's a streak, man. I think it's every week. I don't think there hasn't been a week where I haven't hit that button. This week was probably the closest. That was the only one. Chucky Brown, make Bo Dallas relevant. I don't know if, we, I don't know about that, man. Bo Dallas is he's a job yeah, for with, life. With the help of Bray Wyatt, I think they could actually do something good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they have, they actually are brothers. Yeah. We'll see. It, it, to me, I love the idea, but WWE never likes those ideas. They got their own ideas. You know, yeah, if it works for them, then... White in the singles capacity. Right. I wish they just listen to us once in a while. It would be nice. But those are your tweets. That's it for the tweets this week. Uh, to you guys that don't tweet this week, shame on you. Shame. Shame. No, I don't care. You guys are busy. You guys are busy. Whatever it is, what it is. But thank you guys all to who tweeted to the show. Appreciate it, as always. And we'll just move on to the review now. We'll start off with Monday Night Raw. We didn't have a Raw this week because both Roman and Braun Strowman were on the show this week. Hmm. 
Interesting. I guess they and they're I guess Kurt Angle announced in the show too. He said uh, during the whole Wyatt segment that Roman Reigns re fractured or some did to his ribs, and then apparently Braun has a torn rotator cuff. <laughs> Yet we just seen them breaking kayfabe a couple days ago in Italy, and fine, not bandaged up. Oh wait, way to sell your injuries, boys! Fucking breaking kayfabe, unbelievable. Vince Russo would not be happy. Yeah. Uh, we are live from the Golden One Center in Sacramento, California. Sacramento. We needed heel, heel Hollywood Rock for this episode. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we started the opening segment, the Women's Championship Circle mm. Coronation. And I missed this, so I'm going to let Corporate Cappy take over. You saw a lot of this. So. I watched the whole thing. You watched the whole thing. From what I looked, it just looked like Alexa ripping everybody oh, apart. I, just, I soaked it in, man. So <laughs> all, but they, they put all the women uh, out there in the ring for some reason. Guess to put them all on TV. Yeah, we, we even have them in a match after. We, wow, we, we have all we the had, women. I guess this is the, re, the only reason to get all the women on one yeah, segment. They even week. had Alicia Fox and Dana out there. Like, wow. wow. So Alexa comes out, and she stands on this little podium. Yeah, the so. circle podium. I've seen that. <laughs> she's like, wow, it's nice She's not tall enough. Here. She's too small. It's a nice view from up here. And so she just starts ripping apart Mickey. She says, oh, Mickey, um... Sorry, I never got to meet your your uh, one of your greatest foes, uh, May Young. May Young or old, or fabulous. May Young. Moolah. It was it was May Young or fabulous Mula. One of them. She said that, you know, basically saying that Mickey James is really old. Oh, okay. And then she went over to Sasha, and her and Sasha had a stare down, and I really didn't want to see that. Um, <laughs> I don't even remember what she said to, to Sasha, to be honest with you. Um. <laughs> Because I just kind of tuned it out of my brain. Then she went over to Nia Jax. Or Sasha kind of like took a step forward. And like Alexa kind of like accidentally backed into Nia Jax. And she kind of turned around and said, we're good. We're good. I, I, don't, I don't got any, any problems with you. You're, you're, you're good. Oh, God. And she goes back on the podium and looks at Bailey, And just says, uh, hey, was that your your family in the front row last night? At least they they have a champion they could be proud of now. Oh. And then Bailey shoves her off the podium, and Alexa falls. And I don't know if anybody saw this, but when she fell, she landed on the microphone, oh. and like the, the the piece that goes on the microphone just like exploded. <laughs> Ouch! I didn't see that. Oh, yeah. she like fell on the microphone, and the microphone thing like blew, like Ouch. exploded. Ouch! And it led to a brawl. And originally, what was scheduled for the night was. Alexa and Nia versus yeah. Bailey and Sasha, but they ended up just doing this eight woman tag team match, hmm. and the match itself. I mean, you saw the match. Yeah, match. Nothing really to say about this. Sweet, we got all the women in, in the division in one match. I guess you can say that. That was a plus. I can't even call it a plus because the match was a cluster. The match sucked. <laughs> Literally, nothing happened in this match that was exciting. It was terrible. In my opinion, this is actually a terrible match. Um. Alexa looks strong, pinning Bailey. That's one thing we can take out of it. Uh, pouring, pinning the former champion clean. There wasn't no dirty tactic to win, but it's just cl- the rest of the match just clustered. It, I couldn't concentrate on what was going on. There's botching left and right, obviously from Dana Botch um, and other people too. Alexa, Alicia Fox, I man, she's just a good wrestler. I don't know, she was off her game tonight, but like, whatever, man. Just, uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible women's match for Monday Night Raw, and then we had everyone in there. Wow. Who would have thought? I love the coronation, though. I mean, Ale- Alexa... Coronation sounded sweet. Alexa's mic skills are great. She just loves ripping apart everybody. That's how that's better than the match. Yeah, the, the match... Well, it's because there's too many people. You can't have eight women tag Especially matches. Especially when you got Dana Brooke and Alicia Fox yeah. in there. Well, you're just adding it. You're adding and to the Nia, botanist. oh my god. Remember that, that spot where Nia went over the top rope and, oh, like, Dana, man. like, pulled the rope way too Yeah, long. because she was already on the ground, and Nia didn't even start running yet. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> oh, my uh, God. We'll just move on. Anyways, that... Michael Chow says, I just replied to Road Dog saying, if him and Vince would like to hear my ideas for Extreme Rules or Money in the Bank, feel free to DM me. By the way, Road Dog can kiss my ass. Vince has given us Spirit Squad, the XFL, Fastlane, and he has the balls to say, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Hashtag corporate Michael Chow. Hashtag two words for you. I don't know if he fit all that. I think he put the DM me thing. Because that looks like a lot to put in one tweet, but that's yeah. that's hilarious, Michael Chow. <laughs> I'd be I'd love it if he DM'd you. That would I would make my day. Um, but yeah, match suck. No one else to say. We're gonna move on. Uh, Enzo More with big cast faces. Luke Gallows with Carl Anderson. <laughs> if we okay we okay we saw the match at Payback. Now why do we need to have it again? This is one on one now. So they, got, they did that bleeding up to it. Didn't yeah. They? 
So Enzo and Casper Ka- cutting a promo before the match. They got jumped by the club, but the club failed. So they made the club fail because Enzo and Cash just cleared the ring. And then it led into the match. And it's a typical Raw match. Nothing really exciting out of it. Enzo doing some cringe sporting taunts throughout the match. Really did nothing for me. Carl Anderson ends up distracting Enzo. The most obvious thing ever. Like, I called I called what was going to happen before it even happened. And then Carl Anderson distracted Enzo. Led to Luke Gallows with the Luke Gallows polls for the win. Done. Luke Gallows wins. Cool. Not I, I much think- to say. I think the tag team division's really hurting without the revival right now. I think yeah. they had a big, big time. Uh, pl- it's like they were going to have a big time yeah. role in it, and we'll have to see. Um, where's Slater? Oh yeah, we know where Slater and Rhino is. Never mind. Continue. <laughs> I didn't write anything down for this because I actually forgot to watch it. Um, the in ring segment was Seth Rollins, The Miz, and Finn Balor. From what I've seen, it was it, actually a pretty funny segment. It, it kind of looked like. Rollins and Balor were talking about the, the getting universal the, title. the universal title, mm-hmm. and then the Miz came in. Not sure what the Miz was talking about. I don't know how the Intercontinental title got in between this. And he Had, said, "Oh, he was basically saying that Seth Rollins, like, is he out of his mind, or both of them are out of their mind trying to battle the Beast?" Yeah, pretty much. But it ends up being they didn't get put in a match, a triple threat match for the number one contendership for the Intercontinental title. So now we have the minor title being put first on the main show. Well, you have to because. Brock Lesnar won't be here until July. So, got to do something. And then SmackDown Am- is no excuse. They have their title. But then Ambrose came out, too, during yeah. this. Oh, and Ambrose came out. Okay, so that's probably what had to do with the Intercontinental title. And I guess the Miz actually cut a really good promo during this. And he always does, man. He's, yeah, he's, he's, he's an he unreal heel. Ambrose is, is a disgrace as a champion. And yeah. He's going to bring prestige back to that title like he did on SmackDown and... So I'm all for that. I just didn't like the result, and we'll talk about that when we get to the main event. And they event. all said that they wanted to kick the shit out of Miz after. Yeah. All three of them. Yeah. I do like one thing that stemmed out of this, and we'll get into it in the main event. Um, we'll move on. We had a cruiserweight clusterfuck tag team match with Tony Neat, Brian Kendrick, Noam Dar, Rich Swann, Akira Tazawa, and Jai. I'm looking at this, I'm like, oh my god, there's too many people. It's going to be bad. But then when I watched it, it was actually a decent match. It actually had some good spots. It's a shame the cruiserweights are so underappreciated in WWE, and they don't get the the appreciation I think they deserve, and the time I think they it's deserve. Nothing like the cruiserweight classic. Like, why have their own show if you're going to make them appear on Raw? I really don't like that idea. Um, they should be sticking to their own show, and you get people to mo- watch more if it was their own show on Thursdays or something like that. I think Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. You got a week of like half a week of wrestling right there. I'm okay with them putting uh, like a title match on the pay per view, yeah. So at least like people can see them. But, like, they should just keep them off of Raw completely. Right. Um, the only thing I want to take away from this match is at the beginning when they all came out. Gallagher gave... Uh, oh, he gave uh, Rich Swan and Tozawa their, uh, their own Sir umbrellas. William the Thirds. <laughs> they all walked in like gentlemen with umbrellas. Uh, Gallagher ends up picking up the win with his dropkick finisher. His nice corner dropkick. Such an effective move. I mean, like you're Bryan probably move. dazed after getting the headbutt, so it kind of kind of works, you know? No, the cruiserweights are awesome. I love them. I thought it was a good match. Just I hate how they get underappreciated in WWE. Sucks. We had such a good showing of the cruiserweight classic to this shit. Can the cruiserweights have like a tag team title? That'd be nice. Because besides the main title, they really have nothing else to fight, to fight for. for, right? Or like a TV title or something. Yeah. Um, but again, it just shows what happens. Like it's the same thing with NXT. When Triple H groomed someone in NXT to be something good on the main roster, when he goes on the main roster, Vince just fucking ruins it right away. Then when we got Cruiserweight Classic, which is basically NXT because it was the NXT crowd and they had more control over it. As soon as they made it 205 Live in the main roster, gone like that. She didn't make any sense to me. I, I hate how... how And it, he Water complains. Down. He complains why it sucks so much because you don't know how to use them. You wonder Simple why as the that. are down for it. We got an in-ring segment with uh, Sheamus and Cesaro cutting a heel promo. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, I lost my pot filter. Did you see it drop? Oh, I see it. It's right here. <laughs> but uh, Shazaro and Sheamus cutting a heel promo here. Shazaro. Shazaro. Them in those jackets. <laughs> I don't know. Let me put my pot filter back on here. I have to, like, find a way to put this on. It's broken, so I got to, like, tape it on here or something. Broken mat. You got to tape it on, man. Anyways, they're saying stuff like uh, they never liked anyone anyways, blah, 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 blah. Sheamus blah. said that, yeah. Uh, they said this cringe thing about, you know, about people raising the bar, but they are the bar. 
<laughs> oh, neat. That is great, guys. You're the bar. Okay. I like Cesaro's uh, part in this where he said, uh, "You guys don't. You guys don't appreciate what you have already in guys like me." But then you want bring back old old stars or looking forward to the future when it's right in front of you. So mm. he's basically saying how underappreciated he is by mm. everybody. Juggy Brown has to go. Uh, he says he has to attend to Mrs. Juggy. Hashtag Lowdown Show is awesome. Thank you, Juggy. Thanks, See you later, Juggy. bud. Um, yeah, they said that cringe thing, but then the Hardys came out. I'm like, okay, some saving grace here. Uh, they came out to basically answer their promo, and they have one word for it. Matt Hardy drops the mic, looks at Jeff, and they both go, delete! <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, it's broken Matt. is close. <laughs> He's close. Then they charge the ring, but Cesaro and Sheamus run away. Heel tactic. You even hear Cesaro at one point. If you hear listen close, he's like, "I do what I want when I want." <laughs> you know, uh, I can get behind this. if they're gonna continue this feud with them as heels. Why like not? It. I like it. And the Hardys is just Cesaro and Sheamus will probably win that turmoil, guaranteed. Oh, what do you mean, Golden Truth's gonna win it? No, they're not. No, they're not. <laughs> uh, not speaking of, but speaking of cringe teams. We got Heath Slater with Rhino against Apollo Crews with Titus O'Neil. This is a decent match, though. It actually was better than the women's match. Just going to put that out there. Uh, Apollo could be used so much better. Seems like they, they're making him into this make Darren Young great again gimmick replacement with Titus O'Neil, though. I kind of get that feeling. That's The it. reason they had this match was because they had a backstage segment where Apollo Crews and Heath Slater were talking about... Um, Heath Slater was giving him fatherly advice. Because of all of his kids that he has at home, and, and Apollo Crews is, is a soon-to-be father. Oh. Titus comes out of nowhere and says, Why are you talking to the enemy? You yeah. need father advice, you come to me. I'm I'm the dad of the year, remember? Yeah, Titus, Titus Brand, baby. Like, when you need something, you come to me. And Paul's like, all right, all right, all right. And led to this match. And Apollo Crews won. Duh. And Rhino photobombs the selfie after. <laughs> and just jumps in there. Okay, that's nice. So I'm guessing these teams are going to feud. Sure. I'm done with that. I'm moving on. <laughs> I thought there was some hope again. I thought you liked Apollo right? with the Titus brand. I do, but if they're going to do this direction, I don't like it. He, they have this, they have it. They have the spotlight. They have the talent right there. They have a chance to make something big with the Titus brand, but they won't do it. Raw, they won't do it. SmackDown, maybe. Raw, they will not do it. It will not get any bigger than what we're seeing they're right gonna now. They're going to beat Rhino and Slater. It's, I'm telling you, it's going to be the next make Derek Young Gridman. It's going to fade away, and then they're going to be on main event from now on. It's terrible. Anyways, again, entering segment with Kurt Angle. This was an unreal segment. I loved it. Kurt Angle comes out and talks about the Reigns and Strowman situation and ends up getting interrupted by Bray Wyatt. And he tells Kurt, Bray, uh, Kurt Angle they haven't been formally introduced. I am Bray Wyatt. Okay. Bray Wyatt got a huge reaction. Massive reaction. It's a good reaction. Um, he says uh, he's here to be the savior of Raw. Wyatt hears all the cries of the WWE Universe and he can fix it. Angle needs Wyatt. Wyatt asks Angle if he's going to allow him to do his work. Will he stand by Wyatt's side or get in his way? Angle says he doesn't know what Wyatt has planned, but Wyatt needs to remember one thing. This is Kurt Angle's show. What the hell was mic that? Drop. Oh, mic drop. Oh, so that was a mic drop. <laughs> um, Wyatt laughs hysterically, and Wyatt uh, retorts and says, this may be Angle's show, but this is Wyatt's world. And that- then disappears. Wow. Unbelievable segment. I actually had goosebumps a little bit. This is a great segment. They didn't have to say too much. Nope. But and- what they said... Meant something. Yep, and I'm loving the direction that Bray Wyatt's going with, and we'll get into that in the main event. But first, we get Austin Aries versus TJP, not TJ Perkins. I guess he's now heel, so we have to change his name. He's now being referred to as TJP. He was even in his nameplate. And he has black pants now. Ooh. Good match, though. Good match. Uh, TJP with a lot of heel tactics throughout the match, working on the knee, uh, not listening to the referee's count when he's working on the knee. Uh, TJ per- he- he's embracing the heel, the heelness. I should say. Uh, TJP attacks the injured leg of Air... Er, sorry, TJP going for the detonation kick. It gets reversed into the last chancery by Austin Aries. This is a really, Beautiful. really good reversal. And then he taps out. Wow. And then TJP attacks the injured leg 
of Austin Aries after the match, adding to his uh, heel tactics. Yeah, because they had a promo before the match. Well, it wasn't really a promo. It was a backstage segment between uh, TJP and Neville. TJ. And, and TJ Perkins. TJ Perkins. No, TJ P. Neville said that, you know, you need to step up and start, you know. If we're going to take down Austin Aries, you need to step up. Okay. Interesting. And kind of did. I think Austin Aries is probably – I didn't see 205 Live this week. Uh, I saw the first two matches. I didn't see what happened with Aries, but uh, I don't know if he, he was still continuing to nurse that leg injury or not. I don't know what was going on with that. I'll have to go back and see. But we get into the main event, Intercontinental Championship number one contenders match, Finn Balor, Seth Rollins, and The Miz. Really, really good match. Uh, we finally got a decent main event. There's a lot of good spots. It felt more like a pay-per-view quality match, too. And that's something we don't see a lot on Raw, especially in the main event. It's very well done. Very, very appreciated this. Um, Balor setting up for the coup de grace at one point, and then Bray Wyatt appears. And this is what I love. Setting up their feud. He attacks Balor and gives him to Sister Abigail, basically signifying this is the start of their feud, and we're going to have Balor and Wyatt. Wow. This is going to be unreal. This is probably going to be one of the best feuds on Raw. Especially if you, you might as well have to because Brock Lesnar is not going to be there. Especially if he brings out the Demon King. I don't think... I think it just goes back. I think JD predicted it. He thinks that they're going to hold off on a Demon King until like SummerSlam. Like Bray Wyatt's going to try to get it out of him and Balor's going to be like, no, I'm not that guy anymore. I'm, you know, I'm, this, I'm the pop collar Balor. <laughs> I'm Balor Club Balor. And then finally we'll get like the Demon versus Bray Wyatt. Like I see it ending at a SummerSlam and we're finally getting it at a SummerSlam. Hopefully not Great Balls of Fire, but SummerSlam we might <laughs> see that. Um, so yeah, he attacked Balor, gave him a sister Abigail, then Bray, Bray Wyatt disappears. Sort of. We'll get into that. And the Miz capitalizes and pins Balor. The Miz facing Dean Ambrose for the oh, inter- yeah. where have I heard that before? Oh yeah, SmackDown. So we're getting a rinse and repeat feud on Raw. You know what? I'm I'm happy for Miz that he's actually credible on Raw, which he never was before. Yeah, we were scared he was going to get underutilized on Raw. So good for him winning. I mean, and it's typical Miz fashion having the other two guys get the shit kicked out of him by other people. Yeah, and then him taking advantage of it because Rollins was attacked by Joe during this match too. I think. Right? Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, he was. He was. Yeah, he was. Like he like completely like took him out of the match. Yeah, it? and that's how it led to Miz winning because after Balor got attacked, Mi- or Seth Rollins couldn't save the pin because he was out. I think it made like as much as I don't want to see Miz and Ambrose again. It what happened sense. in this match made sense mm-hmm. for the other feuds. And I guess there was footage released um, during the dark segment. Bray Wyatt came out from under the ring and ran to the back. Just ran, and Dean Ambrose, I guess, was in the dark and goes, "What the hell was that?" <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was great. If anyone hasn't seen it, go and watch that it's somewhere on YouTube or Twitter. But uh, for Raw this week, mm, I'm gonna give it a four. I think four seems like a good rating. It was good. It was bad in some parts. Now I'll boost it up to a five. It was half good. So I'll give it a half half a score. Five out of ten for Raw this week. I think I, I'm going to give it the same thing. It was just it, half of it was bad, half of it was good. There's not really much to say. The main event Nothing was, was too exciting. Nothing was too bad. There was a, the, just normal bad moments and normal good moments. I liked the main event. And the main I event was awesome. The Aries and TJP match. I liked Alexis Coronation, not the match. Yeah. And was there another segment that was good? Yeah. Kurt Angle and Bray Wyatt. Yeah, there you go. And Cesaro and Sheamus and the Hardys. There you go. Five. So five out of ten for uh, Monday Night Raw this week. Again, you can't really talk about much if nothing happened. So that's that's it for the review for Raw. I think they were mailing it in for the uh, the long f- trip over to the European yeah, tour. Yeah. So we'll move on to the blue brand. Smackdown Live. Which has been awful the last two weeks. So we'll see what happens in this episode. Save Mark Center in Fresno, California. Mm. So they're in a California trip this week for both shows. Uh, we had a pre-recorded segment before the show that they showed uh, early on in the day. Jinder Mahal was conducting his official photo shoot as a WWE champion. And when I say official, I mean it was sarcastic. That was not official. Because Shane McMahon interrupts uh, his moment and repossesses the SmackDown title saying he didn't actually win it. He stole it. So SmackDown title is off of Jinder Mahal. Co- conveniently after Payback. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> conveniently. Yeah. So the opening segment, Shane McMahon uh, comes out and introduces the new face of America, Chris Jericho, yeah. the U.S. champion. Uh, Jericho comes out and announces that Tuesday nights are now the new show of Jericho. 
he invites the crowd to smack it down, man. <laughs> That's great. So he's on SmackDown now. So when he comes back, he'll be on the SmackDown brand. That's interesting. I, I can. So after his tour, he'll be coming back to SmackDown. So I like it. Uh, Shade announces that Jericho will defend his title against uh, Kevin Owens later on tonight, and they're interrupted by AJ Styles. And Styles got a really, really good oh, reaction. Huge pop. Massive pop. He reminds Chris Jericho that of their history together, uh, bringing up Y2 AJ. And says, a lot has changed since they faced off, calling SmackDown the house that AJ Styles built. He's right. Jericho says he made Owens tap out at Payback and threatens to put AJ on the list, but then they are interrupted by Kevin Owens. His Titantron is ridiculous. With his face, that's great. I love it. The ramp, oh my yeah, god. That's, that's beautiful. Actually, uh, someone pointed it out. I forget who. I forget where he listened to it. Um, I don't know if it's a superstition of... KO, or if he's doing it on purpose, he, every time you know how he has his face on the ramp, he doesn't touch it with his feet. He walks around it. I never noticed that. He doesn't step on it's his own face. To step on his own head. I don't know if that's like a sporting superstition thing. Yeah, but Not we'll sure. see. Um, he says that the scene in the ring is the most pathetic thing that I've ever seen. <laughs> he trashes AJ Styles in the crowd and starts chanting, "You tapped out!" at the former champion. Owen says it doesn't matter what happened on Sunday because he's going to finish what he started tonight. He tells Jericho that if he thought the Festival of Friendship was bad, as he's talking, Styles leaves the ring and the two start brawling on the ramp. And then until officials make their way out and they split them up. So This was actually a really good opening segment. Yeah, and it, op- it starts the feud between Owens and Styles. So, uh, Interesting. Um, I really liked it, though. Yeah? Um, I'm trying to think of anything else I can take away from it. I was upset that Jer- Jericho... Or we're rekindling this Y2AJ thing, I thought, at first, but... Mm-hmm. Uh, we have finally the end of the night that that will not be happening. Okay. Um, I think that Owens and Styles is going to be the show stealer at Pay- Backlash, and it should. I know there's Nakamura and Ziggler and people looking forward to it. I wouldn't even be surprised if that's the main event. They build it. They're building this whole backlash thing about Nakamura's first match. That what if that's the main event? You know what I'd like to see more on pay per views is number one contender matches. Because like it makes them more. I don't know if you put them on a pay per view, people can kind of get into them more because it actually means something when you're putting a number one contendership match on a pay per view, not just a, a title match. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. Like when Enzo and Cass faced the Vaude Villains, remember for the number one contendership? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Enzo unfortunately got hurt, but people were actually hyped for that because it was number one contendership for the tag team titles. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. We'll move on. Move on. Uh, Jenner Mahal, steroid, whatever you guys want to call Mahal, and he faces Sami Zayn. New diet Mahal. I can already tell where this is going to go before this match even started. I don't even want to talk about it. It was an all right match. Gender is very stiff, though, to be facing a guy like Sami Zayn. The guy can move around faster. And than I'm him. pretty sure they faced about ten times on Monday Night Raw before the yep. the, the, the brand shakeup too. No, because with a shakeup, we gotta have the same matches. Makes more sense, right? <laughs> the obvious Singh brothers get involved, obviously, because I knew this was gonna happen. Mahal picked up the win, so whatever. Sami Zayn continues to get get behind his buried gimmick. Sure. Like, I, I don't know what else to say. I don't want to talk about him. Some I, people I, I, and the critics out there are saying, oh, this is what Sami Zayn is. He's that guy that gets buried all the time. I'm like, I don't want him to be the next Dolph how, Ziggler. He's not that guy, though. He should be better than that. It sucks. I, I don't know why people actually love the character of Sami Zayn getting buried. People are on crack or something. Anyways, backstage, Becky Lynch is shown walking backstage and runs into... They're named the Welcoming Committee. <laughs> Best gimmick of all time. Are you kidding me? The welcoming... Com- That's not the stupidest name I've ever heard. Honestly. That is fucking god-awful. Natalia says they're just waiting out, waiting, or watching out for Becky. Uh, they complain that Charlotte came over to SmackDown Live and just it was handed opportunities without earning them. In a way, they're right. She reminds Becky how many times Charlotte has screwed her over and asked her to join them in their quest to make SmackDown theirs again. Becky says she never actually thought of it like that and promises to think about it. So almost, in a way, it's not like they're being heel. Um, they're just trying to take back. They're kind of like telling her the truth. Yeah. The and, truth. <laughs> no, you not just say that. Uh, 
And, but, and Becky kind of contemplating it, you know? Yeah, and it's true. Charlotte has screwed Becky in the past. They brought up some truth there, so... And Charlotte being handed a title opportunity right when she came over. I mean, yeah. they have a reason to be mad, but I don't I don't, I don't get this whole welcoming committee thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, backstage, we also had Dolph Ziggler. Backstage, some random people. I guess, like, the remaining people of Adam Rose's uh, Rosebuds. I don't know who the fuck they were. We didn't get an explanation of who they were. Um, they're all complaining about how management has built an entire show around a guy who hasn't even been here yet. Or here tonight. He continues whining about Daniel Bryan, Shane McMahon, until he turns around and sees Shane standing right there. Ziggler says he wasn't impressed by Nakamura and tells them to watch what he does to Sin Cara tonight. Hmm. Sin Cara. <laughs> That's a big statement right wow, there. Oh, man. You being Sin Cara definitely mean, oh, you're going to be Shinsuke. You beat Sin Cara? Oh, you're going to be Shinsuke. No problem. Sin Cara is just as great as Shinsuke Nakamura. It's uh, close. It's close. So we move on, and I got This is awesome. Uh, every time on, on SmackDown when he appears, it's a good perfect 10 for me. Pun intended. Ty Dillinger versus Aiden English. Uh, Aiden English with his uh, singing gimmick again. And when he came out and he started singing, I'm like, oh, my God, it's going to be Dillinger again. We're going to get another rinse and repeat match. And that's what we got. We got another rinse and repeat. No fucking way. Wow. What are the odds? Oh, well. Dillinger on TV is always a perfect 10. And they... He literally at, won in under a minute. And after the match, Aiden English, like, freaked out. And... He won in under a minute. One thing we could pull out of this is Ty Dillinger kind of revamped his uh, tiebreaker. Instead of doing, like, the whole uh, fireman's carry with the back of the head landing on the knee, he twists you around, and then he l- makes your front of your face land on the knee. Just pretty cool. A new tiebreaker. Really, really nice revamp. Aiden English is all distraught after the match. Goes backstage and he meets up with Chris Jericho. Yeah. And Jericho oh, says, "You know what happens to guys who cry on SmackDown?" He puts Aiden English on the list and he mm-hmm. just gets more depressed. <laughs> it's great. Apparently, that was I don't know if it's true or not. So, uh, it was like a, a report saying that that whole segment with Jericho was a a, a, a jab at Mauro Ronaldo, and it was like a. a re- you know, like a jab back when Ronaldo made a jab at WWE. That was a jab back thing. Like, you know, that was... He, Aiden English was representing Ramal Ronaldo. Ah. Yeah. The symbolism. Yeah. Whether it's true or not, we never oh, know. God it's he. a senile. He might. It might be true. There are lots of 10 signs tonight. I love the the crowd being huge behind Dillinger. Dirty needs to seriously look at this and push Dillinger. I know Cronin's been on Road Dogs ass about it a lot. So, you know, I really hope they push Dillinger in, in a good way. Greg in a chat, but Sami Zayn should win the WWE title at WrestleMania 34. And then Corbin should cash in the Money in the Bank contract right after Zayn wins the title. And that way, Corbin draws a lot of heat from the crowd and finally becomes a world champion as a top heel. I'd love to... Oh, sorry, is there more that he said? Mm, that? Uh, that's how WrestleMania should be. I'd love to see Corbin and Zayn have a feud. That'd be sick. Can you imagine? That's just a good ending right there. The crowd is so behind Steven Zayn finally getting his world title and they're cheering. And then Corbin comes out and it takes it away from him, man. He would get so much heat. Corbin would get, like, the biggest heat ever. That's what they thought that would happen with Randy Orton and Daniel Bryan, though, and Randy Orton got, like, no heat because no one gave a shit. Yeah, but I think people would give a shit about Corbin, man. I do. Yeah, so that, that'd be a good idea. Greg, man, that's a great idea. Send that into WWE. I'm sure they love that. Or give it to Michael Chow. He'll probably forward it to Road Dog. <laughs> um, backstage, Chris... Okay, we already went over that. Um, move on. Naomi and Charlotte versus Carmella and Natalia. Before the match, the welcoming committee jumps Charlotte during an interview. So it's just Naomi. And one thing someone else pointed out on a podcast I listened to that I want to point out, why did WWE punish Naomi, or why did Shane punish Naomi here? Why didn't they just find her a partner right away? Why they're like, oh, no, that's not your, you know. No, you got to go out there and face them by yourself now. But it wasn't Naomi's fault. Like, they, they, they rewarded the heels in this case. Aren't they supposed to be rewarding the baby faces? Yeah, why wouldn't they just put Becky in the match or I don't someone know. else? So Naomi starts the match alone against Carmella and Natalia because we all know Tamina can't wrestle. Um, <laughs> the match was all right. Just cringe when the commentators kept mentioning the welcoming committee. I was That was literally like taking so much away from the match for me. Charlotte eventually comes out. So we got the robot coming out after she got beaten down a little bit. Um, <laughs> so she's a baby face now. Great. Terrible. I love the WWE Universe. They're awesome. <laughs> Carmella gets a roll-up at one point with the tights and wins. Carmella. Yeah, wow. Bay Bella. I'm finally getting a, gets a, a win. Gets a win. Yes. Love it. She still got – you know why she won? Because she had Ellsworth there. I don't want to say – I'm not, I'm not saying anything to that. After the match, the beatdown ensues, and then Becky eventually comes out. 
And Becky kind of teases heel, yeah, she turning here. She's shaking hands. everyone's hand. Then she gets to Cringeworth and throws him into Tamina. <laughs> <laughs> While tr- and it, it, like, affected Tamina so much. I'm like, Tamina, you're a beast, man. And Ellsworth, like, fell out of the ring yeah. completely. <laughs> While trying to fight everyone off, and it doesn't work. And the welcoming committee is left standing tall. Hmm. Interesting. I didn't think that was going to happen. Good for them, I guess. I get the guy just, just getting their stand. The welcoming committee push. This looks like it's leading to a welcoming committee versus Becky, Charlotte, and Naomi backlash match. So, women's title is not even going to be defended at backlash. It's great. Um, typical WWE. What else is new? <laughs> um, Sin Cara versus Dolph Ziggler. This is the real test for Dolph Ziggler to see if he can prove himself to face Nakamura. It's Sin Cara right here. <laughs> I forgot he was even there, man. I honestly forgot Sin Cara was even drafted to the roster. Literally didn't have... I had no idea that he was there. This is like the first Sin Cara match we've had in a long time, too. When's the last time we had a singles match? <laughs> Jobbing to Strowman? Oh, maybe? yeah, for sure. Dolph Ziggler is a good test for you. Sin Cara. And it was an all right match, I guess. I can say it was okay. They it actually was somewhat of a good showing. It was a better Sin Cara match than I've seen in a long time. Yeah, Ziggler wins. Obviously, to look good Super for his kid. match against Nakamura. And Ziggler Nakamura will actually probably be a good match at Backlash. So it'll be a good first feud for Nakamura. Probably better than this match. Anyways, move on to the main event. The US title rematch. Kevin Owens, Chris Jericho. Really good match. Really good back and forth match. Owens ends up winning with a clean pop of power bomb. He he won clean. Wow. I actually what was the point of Chris Jericho winning then? A payback to get him to SmackDown. That's the only reason I can see the the, the only reason why I could see it happening. Yeah, because it made no sense any other way than to get him to SmackDown. Yeah, and uh, he beats down Jericho after to write him off, even with that spot where he put his neck in the chair and they, he like threw it up on the ring post. Yeah, and they're really playing up this head injury and this concussion yeah. to Jericho. Like he even like played it after like he looked like he had a concussion. Yeah, like, and really that's it well. way to write him off. Uh, even so Owens came back like after it and like attacked him too. Like. So that led into brutal, that next spot. Beat down. And that Owens is left staying strong with the title. Love it. Get love it from a boy. But uh, but Styles was banned from ringside for yeah. this match. So. Score. Because I know it sucks because SmackDown was almost the same as Raw. But it didn't have enough stuff to give it a higher rating than Raw for me. So I'm giving SmackDown a 4.5 out of 5. I'm gonna give it a or out of 10. Up. I'm going to give it a straight up 4. Like it, it was good and bad, just like Raw. It just didn't have because it's two hours. I can't give it that high rating. SmackDown was bad, but it's it, it was better than the last two weeks. Yeah, which it slightly improved. I guess we can say. So I'll give it four and a half. Corporate Cab gives it a four. So they're slowly moving back up the ladder a bit. Yeah, Greg says the Lucha Dragon should have reunited on SmackDown. Yep. Me and Corporate Cap, he said that before. Like it, it, it's a shame. That's a good tag team, and but I guess Sin Cara is this guy you have to face to prove yourself. I guess I don't know. So WWE is trying to push. Raw wins barely. Yeah, Raw wins barely. So uh, we'll move on to our next segment. And that is the list of 10. 10. You know what? You know what happens? You know what's going to happen? You just made the list. That's right. Welcome to the list of 10, ladies and gentlemen, the part of the show where me and Corporate Cappy list our top moments for the week, and we give it a 10 rating, which is a good moment, or a list rating, which is a bad moment. And we'll start off, as always, with Corporate Cappy. Start off with the list. We got the welcoming committee. (laughs) Why is this a name for a team? Uh, I have nothing even else to add about this other than... They're they're, it's they're, cringe. they're they're the welcoming committee. They, I guess you have to go through them in the divas division on or women's division on SmackDown. They welcome you in. They welcome you in by beating you down. I guess. I mean, <laughs> I like the heel team. I guess it's but a terrible it's just, name. It, it, it's it's cringe and Natty's cringe as the leader. I think I would have loved to, Team Bad 2.0 better than the welcoming committee. And Natty as a leader is just cringe. Yeah. So for that, the welcoming committee. You know what? You just made the list. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, my first moment's a 10 moment. And it is a big pun towards the moment. Ty Dillinger is back on TV. Love me some perfect 10. Squashes eight in English in 30 seconds, though. Whatever. I mean, it was a quick sighting by Ty Dillinger. But that's another win. That's three wins. On his way to that 10th win. 
Guy needs a push, though. Hopefully, they're going to groom him into a mid-card champion, man. I, uh, You literally just can't have him beat Aiden English every week. That'd be useless. But for Ty Dillinger, being back on SmackDown, being on TV again, he gets a perfect. Ten. Yep. Yep, good to see you back on TV. That's mm-hmm. all you can say about that. I'll get into a 10 moment. Uh, frequent nominee on this uh, on my list, which is obvious, is Alexa Bliss in her championship coronation. Oh. I thought this was a great opening segment of Raw. I'm not talking about the match. The match, we already talked about how bad that was. But the coronation made sense, made Alexa look good. She even had her own little podium to make her look taller because she's only, you know, five foot one. <laughs> and she just ripped apart the rest of the women's division and just showing how she basically looks like a three-year veteran already. And she hasn't even been basically. on the main roster for a year, guys. Basically. And, I mean, you guys can go listen to my spotlight video about how good Alexa Bliss has been over last year. But as for the championship coronation, it gets a perfect. Ten. Yep. I agree. And go back and watch that mic spot, by the way. Yeah, I got to go watch that. Yeah. From what it looks like, it looks like it was good. But uh, speaking of women, my next moment is a list moment. Now it goes to the women's match on Raw. <laughs> oh, cool. All the women are in the same ring. Too bad it was a bad match. And it was such a cluster... Terrible botching, just a mess, man. There's nothing else to say about this, man. It was a terrible Raw Women's match for that. You know what? You just made the list. That's all I got to say. That's all I got to say about match, that. Like, a lot of the women were just chirping at Alexa at the other side of the ring the whole match. That was basically Ooh. what was going on. Couple, wow, great match. A couple, couple uh, stuff between Sasha and Alexa, which mm-hmm. I don't want to talk about. So we'll move on. <laughs> Uh, oh, we're getting into my moment. Okay. Uh, another list moment goes to Sami Zayn with this new jobber gimmick on SmackDown. I guess he's embracing the jobber. I don't. I, 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 this I, is I, horrific. I hear from other podcasts, like I guess they, I can't really call them corporate podcasts, but they're saying that they like this gimmick for Zayn. For me, though, my personal I opinion, I don't like it. The, I hate the it. The guy he, has so much more potential than that. Yeah. You're not putting him in a place to succeed. He, that guy does not deserve to be a jobber. No. With his wrestling abilities, there's to at least be in the main card. Why is why is Jinder Mahal a main event? Why isn't it Sami Zayn versus Randy Orton? That would have made more sense. I would have loved that. No, we got Jinder Mahal because oh. we have to push WWE India. So, Sami Zayn from going over from Raw to SmackDown and continuing this jobber gimmick. You know what? You just made the list! Yeah. I thought the whole SmackDown thing was supposed to be the end of this jobbing thing for Sami Zayn. I thought so too. Uh... My next moment's a time moment, and it's the it goes to the Unreal Made event of Raw. So good, so good. I loved it. Very well done spots. A lot of well done spots. Uh, if you guys didn't see it, go watch it. Uh, excited for the Balor and Wyatt feud that stemmed out of this. Really, really pumped for that, and to see what happens with the whole demon thing with Bray Wyatt. Not sure about Miz and Ambrose again. Still on the fence about that, but it's good to see the Miz uh, finally in a title feud because we know he thought he was gonna get we thought he was gonna get buried on Raw, but looks like he's not going to. But Raw putting on a main event quality match this week was always good, and for that, the main event of Raw gets a perfect. Ten. Yeah. You know, it's nice to have for a change, right? Not like Braun Strowman and Big Show breaking the ring. Yes, I'm hindering Jinder, Greg. John, oh I'm yeah, John Cohn was back this week, by the way. Yeah. So shout outs to him. If anyone uh, cares, John Cohn is back. I care. We care. I like John Cohn. Anyways, my last list moment goes to the House of Horrendous Horrors. Match. Yeah, I got to talk about that. That was... I know we, we talked, talked about it in the review. The payback review, but it's still technically this week, so I'm putting it on the That list. was... Holy that fuck. That match was just absolutely atrocious. The fact that they had two parts of this match, one taped, and then they had to play out that Orton and Bray had to get to the arena and then they did the Rollins and, and Joe match in between that I th- and the match after after that even sucked. I think my worst part of the whole thing and I think I, I said on a review was when Bray Wyatt was kneeling outside the house and it was blue and then he said follow the brothers and the house turned red and I'm like <laughs> okay big effect there I'm waiting for the house to turn on fire and nothing happened after that I'm like whoa oh. Oh, so someone switched it from blue to red. Wow. And how does it make sense that Orton gets there before Bray does when Orton was supposed to be underneath a refrigerator right. when Bray took his limo? Right. Oh, did he like... The, the whole match just didn't make sense. It was garbage, and for that... You know what? You just made the list! I agree. It was bad. They should have had it to begin with. Everyone knew it was going to be bad. Yeah, yeah, you know my reaction, so it's we'll just move on from that. And to my moment, the 10 moment. That's to Owens winning back his U.S. title. Such a biased moment, but I do not care. Do not care. Owens is back to being a prize fighter. Him and Styles will put on an instant classic at Backlash. I guarantee it. 
It's going to be a really, really good U.S. title match. Maybe the main event, maybe not. Who cares? But it's going to be good. Owens is back to being the face of America. And for that, Kevin Owens gets a perfect... Ten. It's just a bias pick. I don't care. I had to, I had to scramble my ten moments this week, so that's all I could think yeah. of. And my last ten moment is obviously going to go to... Uh, a great tribute to the 18-month run of Chris Jericho coming to an end with the brutal injury angle beatdown by Kevin Owens. Chris Jericho, man, I mean, what what more good things can you say about this guy at 47 years old? Mm. Uh, his 18-month full-time run at his age, I don't think anybody can say that they've ever done that. And he's done so, like, the amount of work he's put into the wrestling, if you guys know Chris Jericho's history, he's been around for a long time, and he's still going, it's he, just incredible. He's able to reinvent himself, and he got so over with the list, the, yeah. the it, the drink it in, man. Like, yeah. the guy was, he won our Superstar of the Year last year, guys. I mm-hmm. mean, what else can you say? The guy had a hellacious last uh, year and a half, mm-hmm. and uh, just all the congratulations to Chris Jericho. I hope to see him back again in a full-time capacity. I don't know if we're going to get that, but good luck on his Fozzie tour, and Chris Jericho gets a perfect 10. Yep. 100%. So my last moment, <laughs> and it's a list moment. Oh, You've got to end off with a list. To, it's the Great Balls of Fire. Great Balls of Fire. No Universal Championship until this pay-per-view in July. This <laughs> renamed pay-per-view from Bad Blood. I don't know what was wrong with Bad Blood, but they changed it to Great Balls of Fire. Brock, Le- Brock Lesnar must have the, the old famous... Always use three month title defense rule. Hmm. Neat. So bad. I never want to hear WWE bring up that stupid rule again. If they're going to continue to do this bullshit with Brock Lesnar and the Universal title, why even have this stupid rule? Three months, really? April, wait, April to May. May to June. June to July. Yeah, three months. And we're not going to see a title defense. No, he's not even on TV. That's the worst part. Why isn't he at least on TV? So much for your number one champion. He should be stripped. My opinion should be stripped. It's not fair. Plus, what a terrible pay-per-view name, though. Just put that out there. Great Balls of Fire, really? You're, you can't wait to hear Michael. Oh, we're just one week away from Great Balls of Fire. <laughs> Fucking terrible. This is treading WCW territory with the name here. Like, this is bad. And for that, Vince McMahon for coming. I did guarantee you it was Vince's idea for coming up with Great Balls of Fire. You know what? You just made the list. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. All I got to say about that. Great balls it's of fire. It. It's going to be it. So we're on to the last part of the show. And that is our WWE headlines. Hit that headline music. That's right. Welcome to WWE headlines. I love that song. And that's the part of the show where we go over any news and rumors relating to the WWE. We have a couple of news articles this week. Not a lot. Um, not really much going on. We already talked about Charlotte's nudes. Don't need to talk about that anymore. But let's just got, just got a couple articles. That's it. And we'll get into it. Uh, bringing it to the table. If you guys don't know what that is, that is the show with uh, Peter Rosenberg, JBL, and Corey Graves. That uh, it's basically like an almost like an IWC talk show, man. They bring up certain topics that the IWC and people on Twitter like to talk about, and they talk about it on the air. And sometimes it looks like they're corporate about it. Sometimes they're actually talking their real out of their real selves here. They're not scripted. So it's an interesting show, but get some news on that show. Um, it will be a series reg- a regular series on the network. Uh, P- R- PW Insider is reporting that the show will return on Monday, this fo- following Raw this Monday, and will air monthly. Monday's show will feature the host... Uh, this week will feature the hosts discussing the House of Horrors match from Payback, among other things. Wow. <laughs> so, bring it to the table. is going to be a monthly show, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, uh, you know JBL is going to be corporate as hell and just rip yeah. the fans apart that we don't know anything, so yeah. fuck him. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm still going to watch it. It's going to be interesting. I'm going to watch see. it too, because at least Rosenberg's not one of these corporate assholes that's just no. going to play along with what they say. Yeah, he's no, he's no Sam Roberts. Uh, God. Kurt Angle addresses his entering WWE future. Uh, he had an interview uh, the other morning with Russell Zone's radio, Nick Hossman, for uh, this week's episode of D- WZ Weekly. He says, I haven't talked, they haven't talked to me about it. So he's referring to Darby. They haven't talked to me about it. I'm sure they won't until the last second. And he laughs. That's okay with me. I think what they're doing right now is this is just my own opinion. Uh, they're monitoring to see what I am do- here, what I how I'm doing. They want to see, is this kid really in recovery? Does he really have his life together? Is he coming here clean? Is he doing okay? Is his health okay? 
they see me working out at the gym, they see me every raw doing what I do or do what I have to do. They're saying, "Prove us that you are okay, and we can give you what you want." I'm cool with that," he says. "I understand that. I understand. I understand that they're going to do drug tests on me continuously, and it's no more than anybody else. But <laughs> yeah, okay. And <laughs> but they're going <laughs> that they're going to. It's one of those things where." They're going to monitor me and see how I do. I don't think it's an issue on if they're going to... It's a, I think it's when. So it's not an if, it's a when. That's my That's my opinion, but I'll be wrestling down the road at some point. It might not be this year. It might not be... It might be next year. I don't know. I haven't said a word, but my guess is I will wrestle in WWE again. I just don't know when. Hmm. I, I kind of see WWE's logic behind that with Kurt Angle's issues in the past before they give him what he wants. They kind of want him to prove himself a little bit um, because they want Kurt Angle to return in the past and he had issues and that's why they didn't bring him back. So they want to make sure this time. And I I think he's got himself together now and I think he will have one more match. I think he wants him to wrestle again, but I think they're saving him. I think that's a way of telling him that and basically they're saving him maybe for WrestleMania next year. I think a match between him and Joe at Mania would be awesome. Yeah, I think that's what they're saying for And I'm cool with that. I'm cool with him being GM till then. He's a sick GM... Way he's done on real work, in my yep. opinion, because yep. Angle's just hilarious. Because yep. he's just like clueless about a lot of stuff. And I'm like it. I'm liking Kurt Angle back in WWE. It's great to see. So if that's the case, that's Kurt Angle's opinion. I think he'll wrestle again in WWE. Unlike Daniel Bryan, I think yep. there's no way he's ever going to wrestle in WWE again. Yep. And uh, speaking of wrestling again, in WWE, we have uh, our last bit of news is the Undertaker surgery update. Mm. And this just comes from the UK Sun. And there's an article up right now featuring photos of The Undertaker and Michelle McCool outside David A. Kosh Pavilion Hospital for special surgery. Mm. Uh, there's a note here that U.S. actually names this as the best hospital in the country for orthopedic and second of rheumatology surgery. And I guess they actually do, they specialize in hip surgeries. Oh, so got the best of the best then. Um, I, I'm guessing this means Undertaker's done. He said that once he has his hip surgery, he's, he's never, never wrestling again. again. So I, his last match is Roman Reigns. Unbelievable. Unless, unless there's a bit of light. Someone, I read the comments on this article, and one person actually had a really good point. Someone put, hey, guys, this actually doesn't mean he's going to have surgery. This could mean that he has one more WrestleMania, and he's actually booking his surgery for after next year's WrestleMania. He's booking this surgery a year in advance, and, you know, he's going to go through tests and stuff to get make sure that he's okay for this surgery and you know he wants to go and maybe he went to go ask the doctor hey if i can have one more match can i have the surgery like a month after next year or whatever because i want to have you know, one more match maybe with john cena you something that everyone wants to see so who knows or if it's playing surgery for this year whatever undertaker's done what he's had to do in dr b i'm i'm proud of him i didn't don't like the way he went out but whatever if that's the case maybe he then... can always come back and have like a two like a 10 second squash against somebody yeah <laughs> i don't know who knows it, it may be Comes out just as like a choke slam to somebody. Whatever, we'll see. But uh, that's it for the news. Um, I got two other two other things I want to bring up quickly that we didn't talk about. Talking Smack, AJ Styles promo. Oh that's yeah, great. that's right. So Talking Smack, Styles kind of had a little shoot interview. <laughs> this was great. He, uh, I forgot exactly what he said. Uh, but he was talking about Monday Night Raw, and he basically said that SmackDown makes the stars and Raw takes them. And it was a really, really good shoot interview. Go back and watch Talking Smack from this past week, guys, and you'll see right at the end of before AJ Styles leaves. And he kind of leaves, and you can see the look on AJ Styles. He's like, oh, man, maybe I shouldn't have said maybe that. I said so <laughs> <laughs> I loved it, It was though. definitely a shoot. It was great. It was definitely. great. It, it basically... Styles telling the truth. Yep. Um, and the other thing was on NXT, they're continuing this buildup of Roderick Strong. Yeah. They're continuing it, with, with these these videos. They had the second part of his I, I called this. I knew when Roderick Strong was coming here, they're going to groom him into the top guy because as soon as everyone goes, they're going to need some top guys. And I, I love the start of this top guy build for Roderick Strong. He's he's good. I liked him before he was even in NXT. He was his in work in ROH, ROH was for sick. 12 so years. That's insane. And uh, they continue that. Go watch on WWE.com. But they're doing a great job with this Roderick Strong story, getting yeah. people behind him. And I think he's the next challenger for Bobby Roode. Yeah. Also, we got some news today that Amber Moon is injured and has been taken out of the Fatal 4 match at uh, NXT TakeOver Chicago. Maybe Peyton Royce gets added in. We'll see what happens. But uh, 
that's it for today's show, guys. Mm-hmm. Thank you. I'm sorry for the lateness. I do apologize. It's mostly my fault. Actually, it was all my fault. Had some uh, stuff come up yesterday, but... We got it in. Yep. That's going to wrap it up for this week. Week number five of the Lowdown Show on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. We are Canadian-based WWE Podcast. That reviews and discusses Monday Night Raw. Tuesday Night Smackdown from the past week. Also, during the show, we have our segment called The List of Ten and WWE Headlines, where we talk about any important news related to the WWE. Remember, every week, The Lowdown Show is broadcasted live right here on Spreaker, available at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP or on the Spreaker app available for all Android and Apple devices. After we are done recording, the podcast is posted in full on Spreaker itself on our YouTube channel, YouTube.com slash NHBWR or on iTunes and Stitcher Radio by searching The Lowdown Show. So go give us a follow and subscribe and give us a five-star rating, guys. Everything helps. You can follow the podcast also on Twitter, at NoHoldsBarWP, and join in the conversation. Have your thoughts and questions read right here at the beginning of the show. We are also available on Facebook on and Instagram by searching up no holds barred WP. All links will be in the description below. I'm your self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. Every week I'm joined by my corporate co-host, the boss, the blissful boss, Mr. Corporate himself, Corporate Cappy. Wonderful. Wonderful. And as always, we're always here reminding you to delete. No, but keep it on the lowdown. <laughs> <laughs> you want